We're getting ready for the upcoming City Council meeting of Tuesday, the 17th day of October 2017. From Farmers Branch City Hall, this is the 56th edition of Council Countdown on FBTV. Hello again, everyone. I'm Tom Bryson. During the next few minutes, we're going to go into detail on the upcoming City Council consent agenda and run down other items on the regular agenda at this upcoming meeting. First up, after ceremonial items and a report on study session, members of the Council will consider items placed on the consent portion of the agenda. There are five items on the October 17th consent agenda. Agenda item I-1 is to consider approving the minutes of the regular City Council meetings of September 26th and October 2nd. Agenda item I-2 is to consider approving resolution number 2017-109, authorizing the purchase of fire blast training props for the Joint Fire Training Center in the amount of $224,239. On December 14, 2014, City Council passed Resolution Number 2014-111, approving the interlocal agreement to fund, build, and operate the Joint Fire Training Facility. In March of 2015, the City of Farmers Branch entered into an interlocal agreement with the cities of Carrollton and Coppell to establish the terms by which the cities will jointly design, construct, maintain, operate, manage, and use a fire training facility on property owned by Farmers Branch. In November of 2015, the first amended and restated Joint Fire Training Center Interlocal Cooperation Agreement was entered into effect. This amended ILA allowed Addison to become a party to the original agreement and make certain payments to be used for equipping the training facility as well as pay its share toward the operating and maintenance costs. Addison agreed to pay $451,171 for the uh, Addison Capital costs in three payments, $110,000 in November of 2015, $166,425 by October 15th of 2017, and $174,746 by October 15th of 2018. Now, the purchase of this equipment will be funded from the carryover balance of $668,286 from Addison's first payment combined with their second payment of $166,425. This will create a capital account balance of $232,711 that will cover the purchase of the Fire Blast fire training props. An agreement with Fire Blast Global was made with the General Services Administration contract for the original purchase and installation of the interior gas props. The remaining fire props will once again be purchased through the city's cooperative purchasing agreement with the General Services Administration. The four city fire chiefs have all agreed to purchase the Fire Blast training props for the amount of $224,239 for the Joint Fire Training Center. City Administration recommends approving resolution number 2017-109. Item I-3 is to consider adopting ordinance number 3475 amending the City of Farmers Branch Code of Ordinances Chapter 82 Traffic and Vehicles Article 2 Division 6 Section 82-95 and what that means is amending no parking zones on portions of B Street and adjacent street intersections between Springvale Lane and Balwood Parkway. Council Member Ana Reyes has been working with city staff on parking issues in her district along B Street between Springvale and Balwood. The city has placed no parking signs along the east right-of-way of B Street between Springvale and Balwood. However, an ordinance to enforce such signs was never established. So, in the interest and safety of residents and to allow better traffic movement along B Street, City staff and the police department have determined vehicles parked along the east side of B Street between Springvale and Bell would create site visibility issues for vehicles entering and exiting the streets along Rugby Lane, Albemarle Drive, Collingwood Drive, and Avenel Drive. City staff and the chief of police recommend adopting ordinance number 3475. Agenda item I-4 is to consider approving resolution number 2017-117 authorizing the city manager to negotiate and execute a contract with Munich Re for stop-loss medical insurance coverage in an amount not to exceed $375,000 for the 2018 plan year. Stop-loss insurance is a product that provides protection against catastrophic or unpredictable losses. It is purchased by employers who have decided to self-fund their employee benefit plans but do not want to assume 100% of the liability for losses arising from the plans. Under a stop-loss policy, the insurance company becomes liable for the losses that exceed certain limits called deductibles. In October, City Administration will be reviewing proposals for stop-loss insurance coverage for an effective date of January 1, 2018. The cost for this coverage does not exceed $375,000. City Administration recommends approval of resolution number 2017-117. And 
Item I-5 is to consider approving final right-of-way dedication plat for Mercer Parkway and Commerce Street. CADG Mercer Crossing Holdings is the owner of a 6.285-acre tract of land intersecting Luna Road north of LBJ and south of Whittington Place. The property is presently part of Blocks D and E of CADG Mercer Crossing Holdings, a large tract of land that was conveyed to the owner in 2015. The owner desires to dedicate the land within the boundary of this plat to be used as Mercer Parkway and Commerce Street Public Street right-of-way and utility corridor connecting Mercer Parkway with Commerce Street south to LBJ. The right-of-way dedication plan includes the abandonment of an existing street right-of-way for a Mercer Parkway that was established in 2006. A portion of the dedicated right-of-way is being realigned in order to fit the proposed development of the west side area. The Planning and Zoning Commission will conduct a special meeting on October 16th to consider this request. It is anticipated that the Commission will recommend approval of the final right-of-way dedication plan. And that was it for the consent agenda. Here is the only other item on the regular session before the council at this upcoming meeting. Agenda item J1 is to consider approving resolution number 2017-115, authorizing execution of a residential demolition rebuild and send agreement for the owner of the property located at 3155 Golfing Green. In addition, the council may recess into closed session, but will then reconvene into regular session to take any necessary action. And that will do it for the October 17th agenda. Every regular meeting of the Farmers Branch City Council can be seen live here on FBTV. That is Spectrum, Cable Channel 16 and Farmers Branch, AT&T, Uverse. Channel 99 throughout the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex or online at www.farmersbranchtx.gov. This City Council information program will be made available simultaneous to the agenda posting on the Friday before each regular City Council meeting and will air prior to the live meetings as well as before all council meeting replays here on FBTV. That replay schedule is at 6 p.m. seven days a week. We do have a couple of scheduling notes for you. In November and December, the City Council will hold regular meetings on a special schedule in order to avoid conflicting with the upcoming holidays. So in November, the Council will meet in regular session on Tuesdays, November 14th and 28th, and only once in December on Tuesday, December 12th. All meetings are subject to change, so stay tuned to FBTV for any updates and for more information. In the meantime, the October 17th meeting of the City Council starts at 6 p.m. Tuesday evening here at Farmers Branch City Hall. We certainly hope to see you here. Until then, for everyone here in the studio, I'm Tom Bryson. You're watching continuing coverage of the Farmers Branch City Council on FBTV. Please stay with us.